This is Corona Chronicles, episode number nine. I'm your co-host, Jay Reason, and now we are here with the one, the only, Danny Diablo, Lord Isaac. What's up, everybody? What's up, man? How are you? Yeah. I'm good. I like that hat. I like that colorway of that hat, man. It's like a pink. Pink. Pink and black. Only real. Pink and, only real men wear black, uh, pink. <laughs> is that one available in the store or no? Yes, it is. Yo, that's a good one. Generation have, Records, everyone. I like Generation that. Generation Records. I'm gonna have to get me one of those. <laughs> We're gonna have to. Oh, I'm gonna have to get one of those for myself. So, yo, E, how have you been since the last episode, man? I want to give a big shout out to everybody who who checked out our great episode with Jason, the Sin God, and Armand from Sick of It All. Dude, oh, ton of, Mom, what's up? yeah, dude, what's up? ton of views, a lot of great response. So, guys, thank you so much. Please continue to subscribe to our newsletter. The YouTube channel is like on fire. So, again, thank you guys so much. We are like totally feeling the love out here. So, uh, we're gonna keep episodes coming out, and we appreciate you guys all listening. So, e, what, what have you been up to this week, man? What's been going on? I've been just busy. You know how it is. So it's like uh, I uh, there's a new pre-order. I well, you got a new pre-order. Oh. Yes, that launch. Yes, I mean, yes, that's yes. what you really that's what you really been working on. The most part is focused on getting this. So tell everybody a little bit about uh, about your new uh, pre-order and I'll have it up here on the screen, obviously, when you're watching. So check this out. I have the Devils and Demons album, which is on Force Five Records. Five. Yep. With me and Mars together. Awesome. So basically, it's uh, a project that we did with a whole bunch of uh, uh, we have a some dope features on it, but it's like it's the, the album is like hardcore mixed with juggalo stuff with New York hardcore punk and metal all together. So it's 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 a, it's a very wide wide range of music. That's but awesome. Thing, it was it was cool. I worked with people I never worked before. So, so did you cool, record? You know? Did you record that? I remember you were traveling a little bit, right? You went out to Ohio, right? Yeah. I, I went no. I went to Milwaukee. <laughs> Milwaukee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, I, so you went out to Milwaukee. Right Midwest. To, to, Midwest, went, to, to record a little bit about that. Yeah, and basically, uh, I went out the first like week of the coronavirus. Okay? <laughs> I remember. We we I was like, oh, we talked yeah. about it on on uh, on was it episode one maybe or two of Corona Chronicles. Uh, two, two, two. two. Yep. It came back. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it came back. So fucking, uh, it was it was it was really cool. I, I uh, the Force Five Records uh, is owned by uh, Donnie the DRP. Yep, and, who we've uh, had on. Who had on good? He's a good, 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 good guy. He's also my manager now, and he's 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 doing right by me. And he does right by everyone. You know, it's, it's just so cool to see someone cool in the music industry. You know what I mean? Yep. So, so basically, this record uh, is a Devils and Demons record with me and Mars. Awesome. Uh, we have uh, I tell you right, right now we have production from a lot of people, but we have on the record we got Lex the Hex Master on it from Queens. He's a, a juggalo. Uh, we have uh, I Am Rock, uh, the ROC from Detroit. He's dope. He's dope. Uh, we also have so many the GRPs on it. Uh, fucking so many. That's so awesome. Many fucking, well, so many people on it, and, and you just you just have to uh, grab the record, man. It's, it's dope. If you love hip hop and you love hardcore punk metal, get the fucking record. That's bro. awesome, man. So is that on? Uh, is that digital? Or they're doing, they do hard copies and digital. Okay, awesome, awesome, man. So we'll we'll obviously plug that and have that. So we're excited about that here. So everybody, yeah. go check that out. So E, I, you know it's funny. I've got a really great story for you. So right before, well, we were, well, this is just great timing of how everything that you and I do could just yeah. falls into this. So today, as we're going to record, I was reading this article that uh, your I would say our boys, I guess everybody's boys, trapped. Uh, their new, oh, their new, yeah. Well, listen, so their new record came out, and the first week sales came out. I, I saw the numbers, but, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, I, uh, look, I mean, hey, it's 600 more than what I sold, right. but yeah, you heard it right, and you know, I, I looked uh, uh, in SoundScan you know myself, 602 copies. You know, I, oh, I was telling my girl this the other day. <laughs> you know, people, are, 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 they can say whatever they want to say, it's a, a freedom of speech is America, you know right. mean? Yeah, he said some crazy shit, but you know what? I'm saying I don't. He has a wife. He has a wife and he has a family. I don't. I don't want that on anyone. No, like, listen, no, no. I mean, it, you know I mean? like of course. I, you know what I mean, I, I must hurt the guy's ego and shit. You know? I mean, listen. It's just if if all of his uh, 
marketing I, budget went to fighting with all of you guys online. It definitely you, didn't translate to fucking zero you know sales, what? man. He, he should have hired the people from Pandora <laughs> to work it out. <laughs> <laughs> No, right, right. No, he's, he's a Pandora legend. Yeah, right? Well, I'm saying, you know, what's what the probably the the streaming equivalent on Pandora didn't add up to to what he yeah. needed. But I just you thought, that, <laughs> I thought that that was I thought that was a very funny uh, way because we yeah. were recording today and I, I I saw the article. So, uh, you know, I just thought that was great. And then, yo, so I want to give a big shout out to a friend of of yours and mine, Mikey Hoods. Shout out, Mikey oh, Hoods. Oh shit, Mikey Hoods. Mikey Hoods sent doing? me this dope shirt. That's dope. So I want to show that off. Um, as you heard me talk about in the last episode, in my zine, I caught yeah. up with Mikey Hoods X amount of years later for that comp we were all on, and it was dope. So it was cool. I love, yeah, love Mikey Hoods. Shout out to him for sending that's me the dope, gear. That's a dope shirt. Yeah, yo, I'm going to tell him to send you one, right? Where is yours? I like that. I like that. I like yeah, that. That's I like, like a that. definitely like an that. Ezak color for sure, man. But I, I was excited <laughs> to, to, uh, to get that, man. And just, you know, like I said, uh, the fact that hardcore has kept all of us together all these years later, and we send each other shit and talk and all this shit is cool, man. You know. Yeah, you, know, you know what's so crazy? So crazy about hardcore and everything. What's that? It's uh, they just like the people in hardcore. Oh, are, like for sure. If they're in the ba- if they're in bands, I understand. But then, <laughs> and, and, and you know what I mean? Like they're, they're getting like the-, the music out. <laughs> you don't talk to the fucked up yeah. again. The music out. Right. But it's 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 the fans. <laughs> Who don't have the music? <laughs> that don't have the the the, 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 the I say not, not even say challenge. You don't have fucking the, 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 the means to get that stuff out of them, right? Whatever. So they they listen to the music and they go crazy, and whatever. And and then they love you, then they hate you, but right? Then it's like it's like that's what then you know to, to people like shout out to Toby Morris. Right? So I talked to him the other day. I always bust his balls, but I know. He's a sensitive person, but uh, yeah, shout he's, out Toby. Do the, he's doing a podcast. He's oh, doing awesome! Podcast. Yeah, I was actually he yeah. had two two great episodes. I just listened to the one with uh, he just had Chino from Deftones on, and that was a really good listen. And then he had um, the singer from uh, that band Saves the Day, who I, I really like, and oh, that was God. a really that was a really good interview because he talked a lot about uh, you know touring with like hardcore bands and getting them big yeah. and shit. So that was cool. So I, I like Toby's show a lot. So um, so, so I, I, was, I just want to say about about, about the craziness. So people like uh, they will like I, 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 as I get as I get bigger and and, and whatever I am about no, no rising mm-hmm. people know my my face and everything it'd be funny from wherever I done in the past it would be like more more crazy stuff from my jams than ever. <laughs> And, and I'm like, like can so you I, you want to give an example to the listeners? I'll, so I'll, to paint I'll paint us example. a picture. I'm, okay, I'll paint you a picture. <laughs> it's like when I when I go on YouTube and I see uh, oh that video. Uh, uh, I, I don't have video. Too. Let's talk about the fucking video, bro. Oh my Yo, Bonzetti, god, Bonzetti, Bonzetti, Shout out to Bonzetti for doing the nicest. What? Okay, hold on a second. So what the on. what the fuck is that video though? Because I didn't understand it. So give us now. Listen, this is one of those All things right, where I. I'm going to have to but that's, show that's, the that's, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, so you got show it right now. Show when I right show now. the clip though. Do, do I'm this, just going to warn. Go like this, warn... this, this <laughs> goes yeah. on. Okay. Go. Yeah. So... Danny Diablo. Danny Diablo. International hardcore superstar. We want to love like you. Now you're back from watching <laughs> whatever you thought. E, tell us what what is that? What is the that first thing. The first thing. Found, I, wait, hold on. I, tell I, how you found it though, because the story uh, is right. okay. This is a funny story. So, Kai's Shout out DJ, DJ Kaz. Kaz. <laughs> Kaz is my DJ, and more more like you know when you go into a studio. I'm, when you're a musician, you're know, rapping, and when you're a rapper, whatever, mm-hmm. you always have one of your boys go in with you to help you out. You know what I mean just like. Your boy, Kaz is a talented guy, but he's fucked up. But I love him. He's from the Bronx. He's from 164 Grand Concourse. He's all fucked up like Puerto Rican Mike. They, they, they live like they're fucked up. Right. So, but I had to, I had to show them, I had, I, I had to have a little balance in my life. Right. So hang out with fucked up niggas. Yeah. Like, so, so I'm like, yo, I'm a street kid. So right. I, I, I don't feel normal if I'm in a fucking office area or studio. No, I, I agree, normal. Man. Normal people, I don't know. Like, I'm like, oh, I need to go down to my south. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Me and Kaz, <laughs> and Kaz is very, very talented. He's uh, like writes lyrics, harmonies. Are just, he's always there. Yeah, no, Kaz, Kaz helped, is dope. He helped me out a lot of my shit. So, so 
So Kai is basically. Uh, <laughs> Yo, because it was crazy when you so posted it. When you posted it, and I saw it, I was like, "What the? F like, what? I was like, what the fuck is yeah. this?" Kai, Kai put on a story with his grandkids. <laughs> his grandkids are staring at, it and I go, "What the fuck is this, guys?" He goes, "I don't know, but my grandkids been watching for a year." So, nigga, you send it to me now after a year? And it's a, like out? a lo it's a love letter to Danny Diablo, right? Or <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something right now. Whatever this shit is. It's very interesting and also very talented. <laughs> it, I'll say, is, no, because listen, know, that's the one I thing give you. This person pots, no, that's pots. the thing is like you and I appreciate the like the underdog weird, like the fucking yeah. weird this shit. Person, you know, this person, this person is really talented. <laughs> yeah. He did, but yo, I don't care what well, that guy did deserve. Yeah, like I hope who I hope if he's listening, like my laughing is not reflective of no, like the work no, or anything. It's I'll, just I'll, a very, it's I'll, a funny I'll, situation, and you and I are talking right, about it. So Jay, 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 Jay. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> when I looked at it, I was like, "What the fuck?" At first, I was like, "Oh, oh my god, it's gonna be bad." You know what I mean? Like they go be they, no, it's to not. People. It's not bad no, at all. But people, people, he destroys people. Like, right, like Rick. And I was like, oh, they got to say, but it wasn't. No, it was like not at all. To me, saying that I'm a nice person, love and unicorns. They said, uh, <laughs> oh, they, they said my my little my lyrics in there. <laughs> they said, it made me so laugh. <laughs> but I was I was in awe, but I was like I was like happy. I smiled. Well, because because yo, cool. well, yo, here's the thing. It's like anybody who takes the time to like yes. energy effort into making anything creative, you got to give that person props. Even if you and don't I, like I, it or it's it made not me your happy. thing. It made me happy. No, I agree. I think it's like, it was just one of those things, like I said, so, it was so wild. Um, it was I'm just flattered. really wild. I'm flattered. I'm flattered. <laughs> I'm flattered. I want to thank the Paul Zeddy. I want to thank you personally. We're thank gonna, you so much. I'm going to, Yo, I'm going to, you'll see it all here. So I hope yeah. if you're a person who, I'm going to say this. If you're a person who normally listens to us, Go yeah. to YouTube, right? E, just to watch this part. Yeah, Danny Diablo love song okay. <laughs> by Paul Zetti. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's like, it's like, but yo, it gets it gets crazy. And I when I see people, oh, you know, famous, famous people on the right. shit they write, I'm like, oh my god, so it's like, some some of these people are just haters. You mean mm -hmm. this? So like, and I, I look at it, this. Oh, you suck. Well, you know, it's like you. Done? Here's the thing, man. You got to wonder. It's like. How, like, the person who writes that shit online, like, how hurt are you inside, or how low self esteem oh, you feel about yourself to, like, make a comment thing. about anything, you know? It, it, it hurts, bro. It hurts me. You know? I'll no, but that's what I'm saying. No, no, I'm, I'm saying. It hurts. No, I'm saying not to you. I'm saying the person who writes these things. Oh, yeah, I know. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, why would you even fucking. Like, to me, anyways, I don't, I don't give a fuck. Like, if I don't like something, I'm not going to put in time to go write a comment or fuck. I just don't care. It just, you know, I can move on. Right, who does like, that? Who, that's what I'm saying to you. It's like somebody who's, they're obviously hurt or feel like some kind of chip on their shoulder, I guess, you know? But it's sad. It's, it's well, sad. that's what I'm saying. It's, and you know, you gotta, you gotta, I feel, I feel bad for the people who write the comments because they're just fucking like, yo, get a life, man. Get friends. Well, Matt, I'm, I'm just sad. Please. We got a, we got a good show today, right? We got a great show today, everyone. So it's a uh, Corona Quarantine Chronicles. You know how it is, and uh, we're doing. We're just trying to put some content to make yep. people happy. But uh, it's like, yo, guys, we do this, and we we're not getting paid. You know what I mean? Yeah, we're Jay, just doing. Jay, Jay, Jay works hard, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, Jay, Jay, you work so fucking hard. Like, I got to tell these people sometimes that you <laughs> like you work hard. We, you know, we both. Work hard. We both have uh, other lives. Well, Everybody listen, man. Like, I gotta be honest, man. I, I enjoy doing the show a lot with you. It's it's a lot of fun. We've been friends for years, and, and it is. Yeah. Uh, while it is a lot of work, man, I gotta say it's uh, it's enjoyable to be giving people something to watch, get their minds off all the fucking craziness yeah. out there, dude. Even for myself, man, talking to you, working on the shit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yo, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, man. You know what I mean. It's, it I would say sort of make you laugh. Okay. Right? I'm sorry. Jay, 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 Jay you, <laughs> it's like when, when people start right under the comments, those kind of people are the people who used to be your fans or, or, right, or they, now they think they go, go up, they well, grow up and they get cooler. <laughs> but it's, it's, I have the same ones over and over. I, I, I sometimes I look at them as the same person, three, yeah. the same shit, but they would never say that in my face. Well, well listen, you know, but like, that's, I, that's, that's the thing. Internet has made everybody too comfortable. I mean, we've, that's a theme on our show. We've talked about that shit. I mean, I'm, listen, I'm, I'm a person who people who know me in real life, 
I have gone and fought people who have posted on. You remember when I lived in Connecticut? I mean, yeah. you know, like, dude, I went. I went to a dude's job once and fucking showed up at his place. You know what I mean? So I, it's, I'm it's with you. I mean, sad. It's, why, 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 why would you do that? It's because like, I, dude, I, honestly, I think the internet made people comfortable and they don't really think, oh, this person's actually gonna come and show up. But like, yo, I will. I do. I have. <laughs> how about this? How about how about fucking how about all the all the fucking the weirdos and the crazy people that just go write all the crazy stuff and you're like, yo, who gave this person a fucking a phone? Who gave this nigga a phone? I blame my I blame my spacey. <laughs> yes, Friendster. I, I blame I, I, I blame everything that's bad with the kids nowadays from the real world. From yeah. So ever since Real World came out, everything got fucked up on social media and fucking the, and the TV. Well, and that's what Never, killed. Nothing, yeah, no nothing, more music. Nothing, nothing, nothing's the same, bro. That, that's what. It's a, yeah. That's what kind no of killed music. music, right? You know. Well, listen, it, it, man. We we got a good show uh, today. So e, we got. The, you know, so we've been telling everybody the theme with Corona Chronicles is you know usually yep. we try to do one up and coming artist. Um, yep. You know who's like just getting established. So e, tell us a little bit about our first guest tonight. Uh, All right, coming on. Yeah. All right, we got Jerry X from the Dead Crew. Now the Dead Crew was uh, signed to Ill Rock Records, my 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 record label, the, me, me and Diggy do together. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry X is uh, one one of the guys of the of the the, the rap band that I signed Dead Crew. And he also put out his his, uh, his solo album on Ill Rock too. The kids are from Brooklyn, and let's get them on. Dope. All right, hang tight. Corona Chronicles continues, episode number nine. We've got our first yes. guest of the night. I want to welcome Jerry X. Yo, 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 yo. What up, Jerry? That, chilling, chilling. Yo, shout out to you guys for having me on. Yo, I'm Jerry, very grateful. Th thank you for joining us, man. So listen, yeah, thank where, you. where are you, uh, really quick before we get into like uh, a little bit about you, where you have been holed up in the, during this uh whole corona quarantine situation Andy, to Andy on the phone. i've been home the whole time where's home i've been home the whole time bergen beach brooklyn oh dope man awesome yeah man that's awesome so, so i've been here this oh go ahead no i've been here this whole time i've been home since like march just chilling writing music you know what i mean yeah just wait he's a, wait yeah, he's to get back out brooklyn. there so jerry, up brooklyn. jerry tell a little bit tell the listeners a little bit about yourself like uh you know, for those who aren't familiar with uh, your material and stuff, give us a little bit of uh, background. Give us the elevator pitch, as I like to call it. Got you, got you. For y'all that don't know, I'm Jerry X of the Dead Crew, Ill Rock. Shout out to my Ill Rock family. Shout out, shout out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rock, yeah. all day, all day. Um, yo, we've been together about three years. Um, Dead Crew, uh, we've been signed to Ill Rock since basically a month after we got together. We awesome. were recording um, our first album with Diggy. He heard the album, signed us on the spot, called yep. E for the cosign. He was like, it's all good. And from there, it's been family and just dropping music, 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 music sick. all day yeah. long. That's, That's sick. Dope, man. Uh, tell them about uh, who else is in the group with you, Tony Yeah, Enns. word. Yeah, word. I got my partner is Tony Enns. He used to be in a band yeah, called yeah. Reason Enough, New York Hardcore. Staten Shout Island. Out to Tony Enns. Staten Island. Shout all out Staten day. Island. Yeah, we got his brother, Tommy. Um, shout out to Staten Island as well. And we got DJ Red Devil on the one and twos. None greater. Shout out to my DJ Red Devil. That's awesome. None greater. <laughs> none. None. Yo, Dope. yo, yo. There's people that press buttons. This nigga spins, cuts, dances, smokes weed at the same time. Yo, <laughs> a nigga for life. Red Devil for life. Red Devil. What's that, up, Red Devil? That's awesome. Yeah. So, yo, uh, really quick. So, E, tell me about the first time you heard Jerry and them. So when Diggy called you, what, what, what was it about him that you were like, man, this I, is something I could see? Because you like a lot of varied hip hop stuff. So what, what was it about them that you thought? It, it, it was it was underground, but but like what, what Ill Rock does, like we do is like hip hop, but it's more hip hop crossed over with the punk hardcore stuff like yeah. that and rap metal shit mm -hmm. like that. So mm -hmm. so they they were from Brooklyn and the Staten Island. So they, and I knew them from the scene, from the hardcore scene. They're hardcore kids, right? You know I mean? So right, so these guys, uh, they knew, you know, the style was the, the style was what Ill Rock was, right? So when I saw Jerry perform, I was like, this motherfucker sound, he sounded like sounds different than everyone else. And I was the thing that was drawn, and I was like talking to him. I was like, yo, because the, the way he, his whole shit was, it was like, it was like a, a, a personification, like a, of a like a like a 
a, a different person on right. stage. It was totally different. He's, he's, yo, he's, yo, he's, thank you. He's, Thank he's you. a, chill, he's a chill, chill, chill guy. Like, you know, he's like, hey, what's up, yo? But on stage, he really... He's like, uh, it, it, un uncaged the animal a little bit, right? Yeah, Jerry? yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it so, like, yeah, man. So yeah, Jerry, it, was growing, like, it was like some crazy shit, bro. So, it Jerry, was. growing yeah. up in the scene, like, obviously, you're probably like me looking up to Crown of Thorns, Scarhead. Like, I mean, dude, what's that like hearing a guy like Isaac cosign off on your, like, hip-hop thing? Well, I know Isaac since before niggas were niggas. Yeah. I know Isaac since we're 15 years old, back in the days oh, when right, we were dude. little. Okay. Little, 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 little. And this nigga was always the coolest motherfucker oh, yeah, ever, sure. ever to everybody, always. all day, all day. Always a smile, always a hug. Uh, you know, but before, before the Three Letter Kings, before <laughs> all of that, before all of that, before yep. all of that, you know, this, this, was, this was my dude. You know what I mean? So... When I started doing the music like this, because I used to be, I used to be the hype man for Monkey Pup. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> See, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm the original hardcore hype man, the first Jerry the Body. That's it, first. So I don't care what nobody, yo, tell me, yo, nobody had a hype man, nobody had any of that. Everybody had two singers after that. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. But E started doing hip hop and started branching out and doing all of that. And everybody's always asking me, why don't you do hip hop? Why don't you do hip hop? I'm going to tell you why, because anytime I said I was in a band and he knows, you know how, how stuff is when you play in yeah. a band, yeah. they will be like, people just assume I'll be like, I'm in a band. They'll be like, what do you rap? Right, right, right. <laughs> I was like, why do I, do I look like I rap? What do you mean? I play, I play in a rock band. I play in a band. It's like stone temple pilots. They're like you Nah, you should be doing hip hop. And I was like, all right, well, there you go. There you go. And I was mad at that, so I never did it. I'm not even going to lie, so I just never did it. And then I hooked up with Paulie Nugent from Lords of Brooklyn. Oh, good guy, Paulie. Yeah, shout, out Paulie. shout out to Lords of Brooklyn. Oh, hey, Lords of Brooklyn, Kings, Adam, everyone. We, uh, we played a, a benefit um, for the Children's Tumor Foundation. Yes. And, and um, Paulie Nugent, I said to him, yo, let's do... Let's do a collaboration. He goes, what are you going to sing? I said, no, I'm going to rap. He's like, you're going to rap? And I was like, yeah. He's like, you sure you could do that? I was like, yeah, I, I think so. I was yeah. like, yeah. So I got a track. I wrote the hook and the verse in like 15 minutes, yeah. sent it back to him. And he was like, yo, you got to be kidding me. And that was like the birth of Brooklyn Murder Club. And it, it oh, was right. like, oh, so, oh, so that's yeah. You, and Scotty, right? Yeah. 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 Right, so, cool. so. So we did that, and uh, that was that. I started doing that. Ezek, we played, we played, uh, we played a benefit for Ezek, and he was like, "Yo, yo, this is dope." The children show about, yeah, yeah. For him, after everything he's done on every platform, this nigga's touched everything, right? Every right. single thing. If it if it could be touched, he touched it. Respect, bro. Yo, he, if, if, if yo, he touched it. So for him to co-sign me is a big deal. I was nervous to come on this podcast. <laughs> I was like, this is a big fucking deal oh, right thanks, now. So, yeah, I've no. been this nigga since diapers, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, this is a big yo, fucking let, deal. Thank you again. We were Thank just you. Welcome, again. Welcome. right we're before welcome, you brother. jumped on. We were talking about how we've been. You know, this is like episode number nine. It's we're pretty yeah. much going to be matched with the amount of episodes we have for the regular, like, in-studio ones. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's crazy, and, it's you know, crazy. It's just cool, like I was saying to E, man, like, this is something I look forward to. I love uh, working with E. Like, we've been friends for a long time, and, you know, when he asked me to do this whatever amount of time ago it was, I, I mean, I just, like you said, it's one of those things where it's, like, it's a lot of fun to work yeah. with this dude, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but, yeah. you know, it's so, so crazy about music and, and uh, the, the podcast, it's all intertwined. It's, like, dudes like us are, like, are, like, no, we come from normal fan, like normal yep. working class. You mean? Oh yeah. yeah. And then, then, then we like we're doing this, and it's like I always give people, uh, like I, I would give people chances. And, like, like a lot of people didn't do anything like that for me with yep. my career growing up. So yep. I was like, yo, know, like I'll help someone out, and they do it like like you now. Jeremy, how many how many albums you put out with Dead Crew? Right now, two yeah. full lengths and right. an EP. Awesome. Right, and, now, and now your solo thing. What's up with that? I got a full length and two singles, and this is all within two years. Yeah. There's a video. The crazy video. Oh, Coven. 
Yeah, oh, that oh, shit is. Oh, yo, listen, <laughs> please go to YouTube and check this well, shit we'll, out. We'll man. definitely overlay it here. So as we'll you're watching put, we'll the put show, it on there. What's in the cover? We're going to play it right cover. now. Come in. You'll, you'll see it. it. You'll, you'll, you'll see it playing over here. Um, yeah. Nice. Thank you. So, Welcome. Jerry, during the quarantine, have you been working on like a bunch of material while you've been home and obviously there's nothing else to do? Or like, tell us a little bit about, about that. Yo, I, I had to write it all down. Let me start with, <laughs> first, I did a feature with Diggy and Tony Ends, a song called Bridges of Hip Hop for right. Diggy's new album that's coming out. We did a video, Lords of Brooklyn, Sheamus, all in the video. Yeah. We went to the Salty Dog during the quarantine. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sick. And we shot a sick video where it was a mosh pit. Baby. And I was like, this is the only mosh pit that exists right now. <laughs> so we did that. So that's coming out soon. Shot a whole yeah. video. There's that. Yes. Um, now, Bundy DMS and me just did a quarantine oh, yeah. EP. I, 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 yo, that, that shit is crazy. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it's different. No, no, no. I, I, I listened to the whole thing. The, the one with uh, the, 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 the old school, uh, it was a, a hard one. Jungle? Yeah, that shit is fucking hard, Jungle. bro. Yo, <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, you yeah, both. Man. Yo, I told Bundy, see, I do the he video for it. that. I said, yes. you guys had to do a video for that, bro. We are. We are. We are yeah. going to do that. Definitely, he wants to definitely. do the other video first, you know, and then we're going to yeah, do a video I, I, for that. I, I, I told him, I said, no, nah, I got chill. Do, the, do that with Jungle first. <laughs> because your fans will love that. You mean? Then, then, they then you do the, then you do the other one. So be, they're a little different. But the first one should be Jungle. Definitely. They, they're going to they're gonna, they're gonna definitely, definitely love shout, that. Shout it's, out to Bundy and Diggy. Yeah, shout out. It's it'll be out in two weeks. Um, right. five songs. Awesome, dope, five songs dope. everywhere, really, really like kind of dope. streaming everywhere, everywhere you could stream music, yeah. or anything. Awesome, everywhere, yes. awesome, everywhere. Either either on the Bundy Blunts or on the Jerry X. Awesome. It's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be on both. It's a collaboration album. So either way, <laughs> dope, either way, it, it 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 goes to both. That's my brother right there. Shout out, shout to, out, Bundy. Bundy shout out to Bundy. That's sick. So you've been yeah, you just been cranking it out, staying busy. Yo yo. I just finished writing 10 songs <laughs> for the new Dead Crew album that's going to come out. Um, that's going to come out um, Halloween. Definitely. It's going to be 13 songs. That's so length. That's wild, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be fucking, it's going to be really, 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 really fucking sick. Um, that's completed. Hooks and all, bro. Everything done. That's all set up. Um... And uh, yeah, that's what's going on. That's that's what that. Um, my single just came out. Uh, Verbis Diablo out everywhere. You can uh, <laughs> right, right, everywhere. Um, my new album, Brooklyn Horror Story. It's a concept album. The whole Yo, album is what's, story. What's the con give us the quick? Uh, what's the quick concept behind that record? I, I'm I'm a big fan of concept ideas. I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool as shit. The whole concept is a guy. He's a werewolf. <laughs> He's a werewolf, like dead ass, but he's fighting with it. He uh, he doesn't want to be down with that. And basically, it's like he drugs. Was, yeah, he, he was an orphan. He was an orphan. He was adopted by a coven of witches yo, that, you raised are, him, yo, 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 that raised him to be, you know, like the man, you know, like the, yeah. the, the man. But he 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 just wants to be chill. But he has to kill because he's a werewolf. <laughs> See, this is why I, I like to yo, ask. I'm, yo, I'm so high, but yo, say wait, I'm bugging out with Jerry because Jerry, your personal life, so you're Brazilian, right? Yes, yes, but tell, yes. But tell me how you grew up. So, oh, I'm adopted so, if, by Italians, <laughs> by Italians that don't speak English at all. My first language is Italian, so yo. I got to raise a little black Brazilian boy in the '70s. Damn. Um, you know Yo, what but, I mean? but you see what I'm talking about? That the concept is crazy. Yeah. The music is the thing about all yeah, the man. Like, yeah, yeah. It's evil. It's evil as fuck. <laughs> yeah, it's evil. It's on some over there type shit. It's like if King Diamond and Rob Zombie were hip hop, that's the <laughs> album. Well, that, listen, King Diamond yeah. writes the best metal concept albums. That's that's why I always like to, you know, ask people when they, they say they're doing a concept record. I'm like, oh, well, oh that's this the story is like, behind that's it. That's great. Absolutely. That's great. Absolutely. My Absolutely, absolutely. So yeah, everybody to top that. That'll be dope. Um, oh, this anybody was, wants this merch? I was gonna yeah, say that's, that, gold. that's a, like a homage to the misfits, obviously, right? Yep, 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 yep. And it has my fucking tattoo on it on the face right here. <laughs> and my number 13, that's me, my team number and dead crew. But yeah, you could get that at official New York Ghoul Shop 
a big cartel. You can dope. pick those up. Dope, yeah, dope, word, dope. Word. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we fucking got you for this for today. Fucking thank you so much, Jerry. Brother. Yeah, Jerry, really, you. really quick before we let you go, man, give us uh, where can everybody find you? All in, social media. Instagram. Give us a. All uh, right, we got. You can follow Dead Crew at Dead Crew Ill Rock at Instagram or Jerry X at Instagram or Dead Crew or Jerry X on Spotify or any way you could stream music. Yo, we got to eat, bro. Don't <laughs> sleep on it. Don't sleep on it. There's a E does a feature on the song Money Money on the first album. Awesome. Yes. Amazing. Thank you. Yo, Thank hit you. it up. Awesome. Hit Thank it you. up. Hit what? it up. Jerry, that's awesome. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, man. Everybody check Jerry out. Uh, we're going to show all his covers and videos and shit. Uh, I can't wait to hear this fucking crazy wolf record, man. This shit sounds fucking Yeah, man. Crazy. Yeah, man. Thank you. you you're going to like it. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Before I bounce, I want to give a shout out to my HTC family, my Ill Rock family, and oh, my yeah, DMS family worldwide. <laughs> shout out. Awesome, yeah, take care, bro. Thank you, Thank you, man. We talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Really excited for our next guest. Isaac, why don't you go ahead and introduce uh, who we got here? Well, right now, we're going we're gonna to talk to a, <laughs> a renaissance man over here, a dude that, I, that when I'm growing up, I I watched and I wanted to emulate him, and for the reason I got to hardcore stuff, the one and only John Joseph. Yeah. John, thank you so much for joining us tonight after... Uh, a couple of delays and whatever. We finally got you well, on. You got so a, a, a 58 year old dude trying to figure <laughs> out technology. It ain't, it ain't gonna well, we, we made it work, man. We are excited to have you on the show. So thank you so much. <laughs> uh, we've been trying to get you on for a minute. So this is going to be a, a good time, man. How have you been during the whole, this whole quarantine madness and all this shit that's going on? It's been going oh, on. Uh, outstanding. I got in great shape. I got <laughs> uh, a cookbook done and yeah. Uh, Training for an Ironman and uh, you know doing a bunch of stuff. Keep keep the writing going. Working on music for Blood Clot. Uh, Dope. Dope. You know that's awesome. Yeah, we're I gonna... mean you you know you know what I said. Uh, I said if you didn't get your shit done during this, it, it wasn't that you didn't have a lack of time. You had a lack of discipline. Totally. And discipline is everything. So. I get up 4.35 in the morning every day, you know, I say my mantras and I get to work, you know, so I train every single day. So today, today I was in the gym, uh, a little underground secret fucking Boricua gym. <laughs> L.E.S., L.E.S.? Yeah, yeah. Gladiator <laughs> style. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I so <laughs> like, uh, you know, yeah, so I'm just, uh, just keeping busy, man, and keep, keeping, uh a positive mentality during the whole shit. Yeah. That's awesome that you said that, man. We, we, the theme of, uh, Isaac and I doing this whole Corona Chronicles has been like using the most of your time to be creative, put out a ton of output. I mean, we've put out not, this is episode number nine of this, which is more, it's, it's probably, it's just about more than the in studio episodes we've done. So we've been really productive. So, uh, again, man, thank you for joining us. Uh, so let's talk about the books, man. I actually have, uh, this John, is, how many how many books do you have? Uh, I got three out. I just finished the fourth uh, the fourth one, and I'm about to finish the fifth one. So I'm releasing nope. like two books at the same time. Awesome, oh, man! Good, so good. let's. I I I recently got the PMA effect, which we'll talk about. But John, let's talk about the first book you did. Tell uh, the listeners about that book, which is awesome. Is that it was a little oh, the evolution uh, evolution of a Cro Magnon. It was like. Uh, a memoir it took me a lot of years to write and uh you know you know uh it was a lot of personal shit in there it was a really good I read should... for our listeners who haven't gotten a chance to check it out find a copy because it's 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 really i mean read. it's crazy too like you know when i when in retrospect like i just kept keeping the notes for years and years i compiled notes probably for 10 years to write the book and like I was writing a script based on a lot of the shit, uh, and my writing partner was like, "Yo, this shit's crazy. If you put this into a book," and I was like, "Nah, I don't really want to do that because some of it was kind of fucked up shit that happened to us <laughs> that kid." <laughs> <They> <laughs> fucked up, huh? Yeah. So uh, you know, eventually I just did it, and uh, you know, I studied writing, so you know. 
I mean, my whole thing is like, if you say you're a writer, then you need to be a writer. You don't let somebody else ghost write your book. Right. Yeah. It's like letting somebody else write your lyrics and then you're fucking coming on stage. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I studied writing. So I, like I said, you know, I, uh, I wrote every single word on every fucking page. And, That's uh, dope. dope. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, it was a crazy journey. Like, you know, what me, you know, because of my old man, what he did to my moms, and then growing in the foster homes and hitting the streets in the seventies and getting Queens, locked baby. up. <laughs> Queens, yeah, I'm Queens, born in Elmo. Rockaway, one sixteen. Yo, I read that book, man. Yo, to, listen, John. Uh, the things I, le- I learned about you. Yeah, that I was like, he was like in Jackson Heights. I was like, oh shit. The was book like, was yeah. Jackson Heights. My <laughs> mom, my mom What's lived it? on uh, when we would come home. For visits from the foster home, she was yeah. on uh, 80, what was it, 80, 82nd 80 between 37th and Roosevelt. No, and I was like, oh, shit, Jackson Heights. I was like, that meant so, that meant the world. When I read that, I was like, that's why he's crazy. Like, oh, it's a wrong thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I used to fucking hang out in Spaghetti Park, you know, like whatever. Hang out at the Dome in Forest My Park. mom is across the street from the Dome. The, the, the co-ops, the buildings right there. Yeah, I know those. I slept in those fucking stairwells in the yeah. winter time. I would get yeah. in the building and yep. go up to the top floor because yep. there was a heater. And then I would sleep at the top floor, the top uh, level of the staircase. Yeah, a six in floor. Those, right in, in, those six build, floor in those build, in those fucking buildings. Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, my, my buildings, the, the, the one in the middle, the middle of the, of the hill right there. Those buildings, yeah. those my, That's wild. So, John, can I ask you about going back to the, the evolution book? Did you had you recorded the audio book version before the print version was out, or how, can you talk a little bit about the release of the book? Because I remember uh, the, the book what came out. Yeah, you like know, I after. did. And I, I released the audio, and and then like it was funny because when the Harry Krishnas found out that I was going to blow up their spot about all the shit they did, they threatened to sue me. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. But yeah, they was going to fucking sue because I'm like, I dropped the bomb that they turned that shit into a cult and, and uh, you know, and the shit they did to kids. And yeah, I remember, I, 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 and I remember reading it. So, reading it. so what I did was I left all of that stuff out and then the print book came out and then I redid the audio. Ooh. <laughs> so that like they couldn't fuck with it. Oh, no shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's then, uh, you know, but of course I had to blow up the spot on fucking <laughs> Harley Flanagan because he's a bullshit artist. Well, that, I mean, that, <laughs> I'll say for- telling his fucking Miss Fantasy book and shit. Yeah, what, 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 yo, what, what's up with that book? He, he, that he, shit is all, all he like. Does is talk shit about everyone, right? Yo, not only that, it's all like make believe. He has PTSD from street fighting. What? <laughs> beating up gay people? Oh, my God. Like, <laughs> Dude, that guy, he, all his street battle fucking stories was bullshit. But the thing, <laughs> that, the other thing was that the lies that he told, yeah. like, about what went down in the band, like, yeah. he makes himself out to be innocent, like, that he never stole money, he never ratted me e- out e- to the e- government. You know what's crazy, John? E- everyone knows, everyone knows he's, the, the, like, he's a, uh, he, a, li- a little, little, is this a, a, a pure evil with that man? Well, I, and I'm just gonna yeah, say, but as it's a, like, I, I was gonna say just know, real quick, as a fan and like an outsider to this, in my world, there's only one one version, you know, and it's the JJ well, version. So. You know, here, here's the thing, like, you know, as much as I don't like Paris because he yeah. snitched on me too, like to take away from his songwriting credits and like, yeah. and then try to say that you know Harley saying he wrote everything and he wrote all the lyrics and like. Look at his lyrics now. It's like a fucking 50, uh, it's like a fifth grader wrote that shit. You actually think that he wrote those lyrics that, I mean, it's like, it's it, it, it's ridiculous. But the thing is, you know, he, he he had to try to come back and like try to, you know, the only way to do that is to rewrite history yeah, of what the totally. fuck went down. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, if you look at the big takeover from 1981 by Jack uh, Rabbit, it says the original Crow Mags was me, Harley, Dave Stein, and, and Dave Hahn, the Bad Brains manager, and everybody quit because Harley was an asshole to everybody. And, you know, Dave Hahn was like, I'm nobody's fucking, like, doormat, stepping stone, 
for some young kid, you know, that's like fucking a child star. And that, you know, I mean, you know, it was cool when you're in the stimulators and you're yeah. acting that way, but it ain't cool to be that, that way later in life. Right. And, and that's, that's crazy. That's crazy shit. That's crazy shit. So then, John, after after you did that book, uh, you did Meet Us Meet Us for Pussies, which uh, yeah. I, want, I want to shout out to my boy Sharky, who I, I had bought your book uh, to support, and I gave the copy to my friend Sharky, and from there he actually turned vegan. And he's still vegan now, and he he's training and he does That's all this dope. stuff. So, which is a direct influence man from your book. So I wanted to shout out uh, Sharky, uh, John. Do you mind telling us a little bit about the process of how that? the idea of how that book came together and, and all that, especially well, yeah, coming out of like you, an autobiographical I, I, book to a cooking book. Yeah. Well, what happened was I've been doing the plant-based shit, you know, since 1981, the bad brains turned me on to it. I went, first I went to Jamaica and I was smuggling drugs in the military. And I brought back like, I don't know, three or four pounds of lamb's bread, but I met the Rastas in Jamaica in Montego Bay in 1980. And they were telling me about the Ital food and all that. And then, you know, working with the Bad Brains and, and all of that and getting a job in a health food store, I just been around learning all about health and nutrition since 1980, really. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, applying it to my life. And I've always been a physical person. I trained martial arts, boxing. I've always been into sports, swimming, running, biking, weightlifting, you know, fucking strength and conditioning, body weight, whatever the fuck. And I was just like, yo, I'm able to, like, kick ass on this shit. So I started getting more into, you know, because then you get these, like, meatheads that are like, oh, you need meat for fucking protein. <laughs> while, they're, while, they're, while they got a mullet in 1980 Tiger Stripe pants in the fucking gym, like, with that mentality. Like, I gotta have 180 grams of protein a day. And, like... <laughs> So I had been wanting to write this book and uh, I was going to call it the go green road to health, fitness and longevity. <laughs> and I was like, dude, who the fuck are you? Dr. Oz? Yeah. Nobody wants that book from John Dunclop from the Cro-Mags. Yeah. Like, <laughs> dude, the, you know. name, the, the title so of the book I is hard. The, I, I was in the gym one day, right? And, uh, I'm holding pads for my dude, and he's like, you know, kickboxer dude. And then me and him is talking, and I'm I'm telling him about plant based diet, and like, you know, so this like fucking mook over here is us. He's like, yeah, if you don't eat meat, like you ain't got no fucking power, and like, you know, most <laughs> of those dudes, they look like they're about to like fall over. He's like, yeah, you know, if you don't eat meat, you just look like a fucking pussy. And I was like, what, motherfucker? I said, get in the ring, man. Let's go three rounds right now. He's like, what? I was like, bro, I haven't eaten meat since 1981, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> And then I was telling my business partner, who told me not to call the book, you know, the Go Green Road bullshit. I was, I was like, yo, you're not going to believe what happened. This fucking Mama Luke was in the gym today trying to tell me, like, if you don't eat meat, you're a pussy. And he goes... That's it. You got to throw it back in their face. Meat is... I, I go, yeah. I, I go, I go, yeah, well, you know, the fact of the matter is, if you if you continue to eat that shit, you're going to be fucking shitting in a colostomy bag. You're the one that's going to be the pussy. He's like, that's it. Meat is for pussies. I'm like, bro, I can't call the book that. He's like, yeah, you can. So we put out the book independently and we did like like 7000 copies crazy man that's dope and then this this big time literary agent uh from ICM uh heard about the book there was a whole buzz going he's like i think i could sell this book and he got me a book he got me a book deal with harper collins within one week yo that's fucking oh, awesome that's congratulations hey, man is, like is, is that the is that the one the lesbians the lesbians what the feminists went at you Oh, yeah, yeah, they came at me hard. <laughs> I said, yo, I know y'all think you got some nuts, but, like, you know, shut the fuck up. Oh, By the cancel culture, dude, it's a real thing because, like, yeah, it is. honestly, yeah. like, hey, if you don't, 
They tried to make all these lies up about me and say I harass women online and all this bullshit. They just lied to the publisher. Yeah. Like I got I got a six figure deal with fucking uh with Lululemon and they fucking lied and said that I harass women. I'm a fucking what? misogynist. Like Dude, a lot of all that they stuff went stems to from all, jealousy. All the, Yo, oh, no, it's because they have an agenda. It's just this whole shit that's going on right now. Yeah. If, if they don't agree with your agenda and you're not down with their agenda, the so-called liberals that yeah. are supposed to be the ones for free speech, they're all fucking speech Nazis. Because yeah. the minute you don't agree with them, they go out of their way to do it's the mob comes after you. Yeah, and the, they the, the, the great you and all that is just fucked up. Man. Yo, it's they really they got me taken out of documentaries, like fuck. What? Fuck. Yo, all kinds of shit, dude. They they Are you not fucking only serious? Just, why? Yo, because they went to the producers and said, if you put this guy in your film, we're gonna write the networks and have it boycotted. Uh, yo, that is so insane, bro. Yo, dude, that's not even yo. They they fucking they they came after me hard. They don't invite. I don't give a fuck anyway, because most vegans are Fruit Loops any <laughs> fucking way. But they don't invite me to none of the vegan conferences to speak like nothing, because these fucking these feminist fucking bitches, which is what they are. I've done more to defend women. Yeah, you than know what? You, know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you know what's so crazy, John? It's like. I I I'm a few it's it's just, I'm, I'm I you know freedom of speech our country everything it's that's where it's supposed to be and I'm saying if so my thing is like, you're gonna say something wrong and something not right you might get punched in the mouth but but, but in, a, in a certain situation you know what I mean that's but, our cancel culture that's yeah. our cancel culture <laughs> check but check check this check this out it's every time I did something like my you know, my, my 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 lady. Is, is, is a dancer and, and she she does she does, she's on, on to, she's a dom and she does both she's a fetish model and I always put her on like I support her you know what I mean I never never I never yeah. could talk down to her or whatever like I met her the way she was uh, wherever we're in love but the thing about that I put a photo of her and and it was like one time I'm drinking milk in, in the shorts and one girl was like people I know girl women that I I protected. From from guys being like graffiti, all like we're taking it back. They they were like to me, they're like, yo, that's you're, you're, look at you just pimping your girl. And I was like, yo, what the fuck are you talking? About? I know these people. And I was like, I, I just took a picture of my girl. Says it's pretty. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a feminist now, and I had a bad day. And I was like, what the fuck? Why would you do that to me? To someone else? Right? Oh like, yeah, it's dude. Dangerous. They're all, like they're they come at you with the fucking fangs out, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, you yeah. know what? Here's my here's my philosophy. I was told something. The dogs may bark, but the elephants have to carry on. Oh sure. Facts. Yeah. That's that's how it is because you know what I told them? I had more women buy my book Meetings for Pussies than men because they bought it for their dudes. Yeah. Because I spoke their language, right? Yeah. So think this when these bitches came after me, this one had a blog. And she was just straight up an evil bitch. So I oh, put a man, thing. Sorry I about go, that, man. Sorry. I don't give a fuck. It, it's and, and I go, yo, if any female out there bought my book and their husband or you were helped by this book, write this bitch and tell her something. <laughs> yo, she got a thousand motherfucking emails. She's like, Damn. this dude is fucking crazy. He, he sicked his <laughs> rabid fans on me. But that's like, what I'm I like, bitch. That's, but that's, that's what you know what I said. I, I said, bitch, you don't know where the fuck I come from. You just think I'm some vegan fucking asshole. I said, <laughs> we got a saying on the streets in New York, and it goes yeah. something like this: Don't start none, and there won't be none. <laughs> it's so insane. So insane that that the, the culture nowadays is like that they say something, and then they all like it's like yo, like the 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 the, the, the computer and the internet. They don't. They don't know. They don't know that. Like, yeah, they say. They don't think they're it. responsible for the shit that they say. But meanwhile, they try to ruin motherfuckers' lives and careers. And yeah, put food yeah. on their table and like, yeah, for the family and all this shit, bro. It's it's sad, man. Like, it's like yo, they, they they've done that shit. To, they just tried to do that shit to fucking Joey Diaz and and fucking Joe Rogan oh, and man. and like they're just fucking like they just. You know, yeah. and, and, and I'm going to tell you something else, right? Now, listen to this. 
Yesterday, I went and I'm jogging and I, I, I put in a 10K. I know exactly how many, you know, mm -hmm. I run over the Manhattan Bridge, go into yeah. Brooklyn, and then I come back over the Brooklyn Bridge. I go to go back over the Brooklyn Bridge and the whole fucking bridge is sealed off. I'm like, I guess I can't go up there. He's, they're like, the cops was like, nah, there's crazy shit going on. So here's the whole thing. Even with this Black Lives Matters and all this shit, I, I, I listen. If a cop does grimy shit and beats motherfuckers down and it's illegal and shit, then motherfuckers yeah. need to go to jail like everybody else. Yeah. But yeah. To, to, but to paint, and you know as well as I do, Isaac, there's a lot of cops that's come to fucking shows and they're and they're yeah, cool good cops. Or we were saying it's good cops and bad cops. Good people yeah, bad but people. here's the thing. So yesterday there was a march because. I'm getting the statistics from friends of mine who are homicide detectives in Harlem and the Bronx and all of this shit of the murders that's happening and the shootings that's happening. So yesterday, a group of church goers tried to have a peaceful march with representatives from the police department, community affairs, saying, hey, we need to come together and stop kids from getting shot. Yeah. Well, Black Lives Matters comes there and fucking attacks the fucking church going fucking people. So where's why the would they, why would they do that? Because they don't want anything to do if, because they did that shit because the cops, community affairs cops were there and they beat the fucking cops in the head with sticks. All this bullshit. So it's like it's freedom of speech. And you find this. Like, because I don't submit to any politics, but here's the thing. Yeah, me, I, the me, I, the I, liberals politics. try to act like they're the liberals and everybody should have a right to say something, except if you disagree with what the fuck they got to say. Then yeah. the mob is going to come after you and they're going to try to fucking ruin you. It's, you know what, this, this whole this whole fucking stuff. Weird politics. I, first of all, politicians are politicians. I don't trust any of them. They, oh, they, hell they, they, no. They lie for a living. That's what they Obama, do. Obama, Trump, yeah. Clinton, Everyone. Bush 1 and 2. Yeah. Everybody yeah. gave Obama a pass on the grimy shit that that motherfucker was doing. Nobody said shit. You know, it, it's, Nobody it's, it's, said it's, nothing about all the fucked up shit Obama was doing. They gave him a pass on all of it. And I called out him, I called out Clinton, I called out the Bushes, I called out fucking Trump. Read my feed for the last fucking, I don't know how many years on social media. You'll see I came after every one of those motherfuckers and called them out on their bullshit. But nobody was saying shit when fucking Obama was dropping fucking bombs on innocent kids and deported more fucking children away from their families than Trump. And nobody said shit. You know? <laughs> Obama <laughs> deported more children than fucking Trump. Those are the facts. I got, I got I stuff think, to do more reading. <laughs> you know, Trump's just as fucked up. But yeah. nobody gets a pass. I I I didn't want to veer too, too off the sub. That was a really... <laughs> and here's the... And one last thing. <laughs> the amount of motherfuckers... Down, down. And the amount of motherfuckers that's on our scene that now yeah. trust the government and the media, y'all motherfuckers need to come and turn your hardcore cards in. Because <laughs> y'all motherfuckers was fraudulent. And I said this the other day. You obviously had nothing better to do with your lives than to come to shows and try to act like you was part of something. Now you went away and you show your true colors. We never trusted the fucking government. When do no. you trust Big Brother? When do you trust the, the corporate controlled fucking media that they're telling you the truth about everything? I don't I don't I don't get this. I, I, I came I, into this shit as a revolutionary. You see that? Revolutionary. Bad brains. I grew up with the clash, the bad brains, the fucking black flags, the dead Kennedys, the motherfuckers that were saying shit. And now all these motherfuckers, and you go on cousin Joe's page or any of them, and Cuz says some shit, and then you got all these fucking government cocksuckers that's fucking <laughs> following the government and sucking on the Kool-Aid penis pop, fucking, uh, fucking yo, dropping yo, shit, tr trusting the goddamn government. Yo, I'm listen, like, Cousin Joe's page is so political. I don't, I don't go into any of that shit, but you know, listen, politics scare me. 
Yo, yo, I swear to God. Yeah, but he's I, dropping science, man. He's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, dropping yo, science he, 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 on he, a he, lot he, of this he, fake, this fake COVID numbers that they're fucking saying. They said 98%. Then it turns out it's 9.8% increase in Florida. All the shit. Yo, yeah. this is nothing more than a test run to lock down the people and they it's fell a, in yeah. line like fucking sheeple surrendering their fucking rights and every fucking thing else. This but, ain't but, about, yo, if, if the masks protect you, how come there's not biohazard bins all over the street to discard your fucking poisonous COVID fucking masks? <laughs> yo, you're right. Yo, yeah, dude, it's, it's a bunch so of bullshit. And it's to push the Bill Gates vaccine agenda that and the doctors ain't getting in the news that's speaking the real fucking truth on what's going down. down As John. a matter of fact, they come after them, too, yeah. because they were told to lie on death certificates, listing it as COVID. My great aunt died of cancer in a hospice. They put her death as COVID. That's fucked that's, up. That's fucked yo, up. it's happening all over the place that they like. You know, this shit is real, no doubt, but yeah. it's like, you know, why isn't anybody talking about strengthening your immune system? Why why ain't no yeah, doctors yeah, on yeah. TV? No, yeah, yeah. You're always talking about well, that. Well, that's man. the thing. Yeah, John, about- John has always talked about that. Like I said, going back from following your career into from Chromax to both worlds, now into Blood Clot. Like you, that, I mean, this is something that's been, it's like a you know, a, a staple and when you talk and, about and, and see, that's what motherfuckers always say to me. Oh, so you're a doctor? I said, no, but I know a lot of motherfuckers that are. Yep. And I know, <laughs> and I know the history of Anthony Fauci in 1989 because I remember when he, when he sold, he pushed the AZT shit just to fucking sell the stocks and they yeah. made hundreds of millions of dollars and the AZT turned out to kill people. And Bill Gates and Bill Gates going to fucking Jeffrey Epstein's island. This is who you're trusting to inject shit into your kids. You know, it's it, it's you know, you know it's, it's, it's so it's crazy. It's bananas, dude. It's so crazy because I, I always tell people this: uh, it, it, imagine being in charge of a world, like of a, like a nation, and you had to do shit that. To keep that nation going and 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 ruling, you gotta do some shit that there's shit that we don't know about. <laughs> horrible, but they had to. Yo, know. you know what I mean? If it's you knew crazy. this shit, we knew that we know the shit they're doing. Imagine the shit that we know. That oh. imagine what we don't know. Yo, man, you know, this, right before COVID started, everyone they started telling they they made a little news thing, but like, oh yeah, there's artificial, there's a you were you know alien life, but no one said nothing. Yeah. Like, yo. These niggas just saying this UFOs and alien life, and no one's talking about it. I'm like, these niggas yep. put that in there. What the hell? I'm like, so what's really going on, B? You know I mean? Yo. Think about that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Think about that. They, they, they're like, yeah, we're in contact, speaking to like um, you know, intelligence, uh, AI intelligence, whatever, uh, alien life. And no one's, the people are like, oh, cool. You know, they show pictures in the Pentagon. I was like, yo, so. So what's going to happen, bro? Are they, like, Listen, the most narcissistic thing any human on this planet could think is if we're the only intelligent life in the universe. Yeah, that's crazy. Yo, we're, we're up shit's creek because we fucked this planet up. Yeah, yo, it's crazy. They're already, they're, 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 I, you know, I talk to all these people, you know, and, and, and they're telling me there's already like, Things out there with, with, with setting up to move to the moon and the sand and, and all this crazy shit. Mars. And I'm like, yeah, no, good bro, luck I, with that. That's I'm another hoax. That's here, another bro. hoax that we went to the moon. Get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> oh, John, you're the fucking best. I love you. Yo, man. we didn't go to the fucking moon. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon and back. Out of here. <laughs> Yo. You look at that footage, it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, John, listen, I want to ask you a question. What's up? What's up with music now? What's going on? I was, I was actually going to, I wanted to talk about music really quick because I want to, I want to talk about both worlds, which was John's uh, other project. Well, I was, I was a fan. John, that shit was dope. Man. That, that shit was dope. dope. Can we, John, can you tell us a little bit about that, that record and the full length on, on Roadrunner? Just because coming out of Chromax, I mean, that's, it was a very different sound, but very yeah, much well, like well, you. Yeah, well, well, well. I was working with uh, 
it was AJ and me and Eddie wrote them songs and then you know we was trying to get drummers and then you know we just said okay let let let's you know AJ just said Pokey could do it and whatever but we put out the EP first with uh, another planet yep yes and I actually liked Fred Feldman. That's how uh, all yeah, of us Fred, alumni our here. Our boy Fred Feldman. Yep. And Fred I Feldman actually like Fred. Fred, Fred the production and the rawness of that. Uh, I wish the record would have sounded like that. Yeah. But so we get on Roadrunner. And, uh, you know, they promised us. Like this, this who they don't know who they're talking to. Like, <laughs> listen, they promised us tour support and all this shit, right? And like, I'm like, all right, well, it's in the contract. Like, you know, you can't go on tour and have bills to pay and shit like that. And you're promoting a record, opening up for the Misfits or whoever the fuck yeah. we was opening up for. Uh, we opened up for Hell. That no, that was the other lineup of, of both worlds with Mackie and uh, and Todd Youth on guitar, and then uh, Zowie played bass. Yes, who was, who was in uh, Zowie was in Leeway. That was all. Yeah, and we opened up for the Red Hot Chili Peppers at the Ritz. Whoa, yeah, that's crazy. Eighty nine, right? Huh? Was that eighty nine? Yeah, right when I got off the crack. <laughs> I, I saw that show, bro. Yeah, that was crazy. No, but so so then we signed to Roadrunner. And I mean, you know, listen, everybody that worked at Roadrunner, the staff was amazing. Yeah. It was the people that owned the label. They made all these cuts. Uh. So right before the album comes out, Michael Barbiero produced it. He did like big records yep. and shit. And uh, they call us in and go, uh... This was like the record just came out two weeks and we're getting ready to go on tour. We had some big tours lined up and they go, uh, we're not going to be able to give you guys tour support. Uh, you were going to get like whatever, a thousand dollars a month. You're going to get like 300 a month. Right. Fuck. Yeah. So I go, yo, it's in the contract. I, I go, if you don't give us the tour support, I ain't going on tour. And they go, okay, you're <laughs> They go, okay, you're dropped. <laughs> oh, oh. Two weeks after Fuck. the record came out, oh. I get a call from, from uh, what's his name? Mike, uh, oh, what's his name? Gitter. Who? Mike Gitter calls me up. He's like, the label dropped you guys. <laughs> I'm like, all right, next. On to the next project. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't do this shit. I'm not doing it for the money, but if you make an agreement with no, me, then you're going to stick by it. Yeah, yo, well, but we know how that is, dealing with record companies. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they do that you all know, the time. What's the, what's the hip-hop song go? Record company people are shady. <laughs> <laughs> I just I like to talk about that record because obviously everybody knows you for Chromax, but Both Worlds is, is a really interesting band and record to me, so I like to put a little shine on that project. Um, again, Yeah, I think it was cool, It was man. really cool. It was like, listen, there was like, Songs on that album, I wouldn't have put on that album. Yeah. But then there were songs like Spiritual Flu and some other stuff that I felt was uh, more representative of the first EP, which is how I wanted to go. But, yeah, the first you know, EP, that was a dope EP, man. Really yeah, dope. like, you know, certain people wanted to, like, kind of be the Foo Fighters or some shit. And I'm like, <laughs> yo, I'm not Dave Grohl, motherfucker. I, you know, I got a niche what I do, yeah. and if I step outside the niche, it's wow. Yeah, no, the, it's cra it's crazy. Like 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 Dave Grohl, those guys can come from a punk background. They yep. toured with like you know like like the, his old band scream. scored with yeah with, with Underdog and shit like that. Like all yeah, just, Scream opened up man. for the Cro-Mags, bro. Yeah, with it's Dave cool. Yeah, playing drums. It's, it's sometimes sometimes I look at those guys, I'm like, damn, I wish I did that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, ah. Hey John, sticking with the just the music thing for a second for our listeners, obviously everybody loves. No, I want to talk about how we didn't go to the moon. <laughs> we'll get there. I prom <laughs> we will get there. I promise. I'm uh, fucking around. <laughs> yo, you you guys did Chromex did some fucking crazy touring, man. Like off uh, off that record. What are just some of the memories or, that you have of, of just like obviously oh, you guys did like Motorhead? Yeah. 
Oh, yeah, it was, uh, you know, you know, the whole reason, nobody knows the reason why we got that Motorhead tour. All right, which why was it? Everybody, yeah, it was because, I'm going to tell you what happened. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to play with Motorhead at the Ritz, and yes. Lemmy and them was going around the whole motherfucking day, and I'm hearing it from dudes I knew. Yo, they're out getting fucked up with the <laughs> HAs, with the Hells Angels. They're copping drugs everywhere. So they're roadies. <laughs> it was us, SOD, and Motorhead. Yes. Now, That's you amazing. know who 50% of the crowd, it was sold out. Half the crowd was there for Motorhead, and the other half of the crowd was there <laughs> for the Chromags. Because we were starting to really come into our own and pack places. Yeah, and fucking. yeah. So, so uh, what happened was <laughs> they fucking stayed out so long and the roadies just kept jamming for like five hours. <laughs> and so they didn't, they didn't put our gear up on the fucking stage. And then they said, you guys are going to have to go on after Motorhead. Oh, I'm like, nobody could go on after Motorhead. <laughs> so SSD plays and Billy Milano's running around in his Santa Claus Santa Claus <laughs> costume or whatever the fuck on stage. <laughs> and uh and then Motorhead plays and then the lights come on. Fuck. And they bump we got fucked. So everybody else was like in the band was like, oh man, that's fucked up. I said, Yeah, it's fucked up and I'm gonna go find Lemmy right now. So I went <laughs> Yo, swear to my mother, bro. Those guys didn't say shit. I go, yo, let me fuck you. Get out of here, motherfucker. How the fuck do you? I'm on the main floor in the Ritz screaming after everybody left. I said, fuck you, motherfucker. I was at your first gig, your second gig in New York. And Lemmy comes out with like fucking five Hells Angels behind him. Cause, and I, And they were like, Yo, you want us to fuck this guy up? <laughs> and Lemmy was like, no, no, no. And I go, yo, man, I'm a fan of your fucking band. Like, bro, that you, you did that to us in our hometown. I said, imagine if somebody would have did that shit to you, Lemmy, Damn, that's awesome. in your fucking yeah. hometown. And he goes, yo, you're absolutely right. I'm going to make it up to you. And that's how we got the yo, fuck oh, that's shit, fucking that was, that's that's fucking, that's cool. He I always his wanted word. that shit, bro. So we sign, he signed to Profile, right, Orgasmatron, mm -hmm. but we signed to Rock Hotel with Chris yeah. Williamson, who ripped right. us right. off. And let me ask for, and let me ask for us to be on that fucking tour. That's and, insane, man. Yo, he was the nice, yo, Lemmy's the fucking man, bro. Yo, now, I, I'm going to tell you something else. Pete Gill was the drummer, right? Yeah. So, Dick, so Megadeth opened up. It was Chromex, Megadeth, Motorhead. Fuck. And I had oh, no, Dave. Is, is this the Dave Mustaine story? Yeah, I oh, slammed I don't know his this head story. off the wall at the what? Bad Brain show. <laughs> Wait, what? I don't. I've never heard this. Like, <laughs> so like, so they come up to us and go, "Yo, you guys got the Motorhead tour, but you know you're gonna go on before Megadeth." I'm like, "What? Megadeth's on the tour?" <laughs> Because, like, yo, he, you know, he was all fucked up and, like, saying stupid shit in the Bad Brains dressing room. And, like, yeah. Bad Brains, you know, the way the old Ritz is, the headliner would be in that front dressing room. And then the, the opening band would be the be the smaller room behind there. Yeah. Right. So he threw, like, the water bucket up in the air all over their kids and their wives. And I oh, just God. grabbed them by the fucking hair and you know, slammed them off the wall. And HR was like, if you want to see violence, we'll show you violence like you've never, ever seen in your life. Fuck. <laughs> so I just said, HR, you want me to knock this guy's teeth out or what? And HR was like, nah, man, easy, let him go. So I let him go. <laughs> and oh, then, you, know, Mark, you know, he apologized and said, hey, you know, later, like, I was a dick. I was getting fucked up then. I was like, yeah, you know, but anyway, so... After the sec, I think the first show was the Santa Monica Civic Center. That we were playing like you know eight thousand seat fucking places, jumping off the top of the PA. That's wild. That's crazy, fucking, bro. I was doing backflips off the top of the fucking PA and over the barricade and like just 
Lemmy said that we were the only <laughs> band in the history of Motorhead that opened up for them, that he came out to watch the Cro-Mags every fucking Fuck. night. That's because awesome. Yes, that's dope, man. What Lemmy, rest in peace. Have. Yeah, that, dude, yeah that's, I love Lemmy. That's and, 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 his, and the thing was, on the second show, Pete Gill was like some poser drummer. <laughs> he ain't filthy Phil. Like, you know, yep. you got a perm. You're like a fucking rock star <laughs> asshole. So Doug Holland goes in his dress, stands in the doorway of his dressing room and goes, hey, man, I just want to say, like, you know, we're Motorhead fans from way back. You're doing a great job, man. Great show last night. The dude comes up to Doug and grabs him by the throat what? and goes, if you ever fucking put your foot inside of the headliner's dressing room again, I will rip your fucking throat out. And shoves Doug out of the room and closes the door. Doug comes in <laughs> and goes, yo, this motherfucker. I said, what? As much as I didn't like, like, Doug's my boy. Even Paris. <laughs> if somebody fucking Paris, I would go to blows for that, for that yeah. nigga. Nobody I, I, fucked, know I, know you're, I know what you're talking about. I know what nobody you're talking fucked about. with the Cro-Mags on the road, bro. Yeah. That's that's yeah. Even if I don't like you. Our yeah. family arguments, if somebody w against Harley, whatever. Yeah. I took Harley's back at the, at the Hellfest when the whole crowd, he was talking shit. And that was <laughs> the final gig he ever played. And they wanted to stomp him out. And they came to me. And I was like, yo, we opened up. We went on right before. Hey, hey, hey Breed. Yeah, you, I rem we, that was our I go, yo, I can't let that happen. And I'm not going to let that happen. I'll get fucked up too, but I'm not letting all y'all motherfuckers jump him in front of me. Then they sent one dude out and Harley punked the fuck out. But the bottom line was, taking it back to the motorhead shit, <laughs> Doug comes in and goes, yo, that fucking dude, yo, I go to I go to the dressing room, I throw the fucking door <laughs> open, he stands up, and I go, yo, you fucking punk motherfucker, and I just shoved him back into the drink table. I go, yeah. I'm in your dressing room. What the fuck you going to do about it, motherfucker? And Lemmy comes in. He's like, oh, 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 what the fuck's going on? I said, yo, Doug just congratulated him for playing fucking great shows. And he grabbed Doug fucking by the throat and threatened to kick his ass. And Lemmy gets up to that dude and goes, "If you, these are not fucking fans. These are This is our friends. They've been with Motorhead since day one. He yeah. goes... If you ever disrespect anybody in the Cro-Mags again, you're going to be home on the next fucking flight. Fuck, you that's better awesome. believe that's that cool, motherfucker man. that every night was like, you need anything? You need any water? You want to fuck out? You want to fuck out groupies? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I, yo, I, I would say something about about Motorhead. Scarhead went on tour and we got kicked off. But, I know. Yo, but we got, listen, 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 listen. We got kicked off. Well, he well, was on that. Reason. You know what I mean? It's the crazy shit happening. And, I patched it up with Lemmy, and but uh, but but it, but the, uh, they, look, we got, it was all cool with four people on Spike around on the bus in New York. We could play with them, but it was cool, and we said what's up. But then one day I'm playing Europe, and it's like ten years later, whatever. And I play Europe, and all of a sudden I'm walking through a fence, and it's sold out. And on the fence, Lemmy's on this side, and I'm on this <laughs> side. And we walk to the fence, both months. I go, what's up? He goes. What's up? You remember me? Because hello, he's back. And all of a sudden, <laughs> like, it's cool, right? He goes, yeah, we I stuck your hand in the face and said, all right, man, you know, you know, we, we shook hands. And that was the last time I hung out with Lemmy. But That's yeah. Funny. People watched it. It was cool, like a movie, like a prison scene. Yeah, Yo, you know, was, hell was, yeah. It was cool. Yo, yeah, Lemmy, Lemmy was the fucking man, Man, bro, he's, like, remember Coney Island High? He's going out and playing fucking video games all day. Yeah. Ball. Well, I'll uh, tell you, what happened on that tour was, we would, I would pull together all of our per diems and yeah. cook, right? Because I was still cooking vegan shit back then. And uh, so I'm in the kitchen of these big ass fucking places and the roadies for Motorhead start coming in. They're like, oi, what the fuck are you making? And I'm like, risotto with like teriyaki tofu and some greens. Yeah. They're like, yo, eight of our guys are vegetarians, man. We ain't been able to get no food. That's so I cook. I cooked for us and all of them every oh, fucking cool. night. Oh, that's fucking great, John. You're and Lemmy came up and was like, 
you know, you don't write a song, we are the road crew in praise of your road crew, <laughs> and you don't live that shit. And he came up and goes, yo, I really want to thank you because it's been really tough for those guys to eat. Yeah. And like, you've been fucking making some great food, man. They've been telling me how great that shit every night. And I was like, so when are you going to try some? He's like, never. <laughs> <laughs> yo, that's, yeah, yo. <laughs> dude, that, that's, a, that's fucking awesome, man. Yeah, we had good times out there. Like, you know, like, let me, let me was, uh, and a lot of crazy shit happened on that tour. Like, What's the video? You know, I, the... Tried to, I tried to sell baking soda to like DEA agents in Texas. <laughs> what? You didn't know that shit in the book? No, that shit was crazy. It's in the... <laughs> oh. they, yo, the hippies had to tow us all through the desert for like eight hours, bro. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Yo, I'm Yo, writing. Yeah. I'm gonna write a punk rock comedy, man, based on all that fucking cool the stories. Shit. That's crazy, man. That's, I'm Bob John. I'm I'm really glad that you're fucking still writing, still doing the Iron Man stuff. Yeah, um, let's talk a little bit, uh, really quick. I just before the Children's uh, Tumor found the Children's Tumor Foundation when you hooked me up. You, you, oh you, yeah, you done a lot of. Yo, good you stuff. you yeah, man. Two I want to thank you for that because that kid is still fighting the battle, man. Like you know. John, well, well, I'll tell right now. Uh, John works with the Children's Tumor Foundation, and I and I started working with these people, giving money every time we do every year uh, uh, a benefit, whatever we get the money in. That's and, awesome. And, and the people who I, I met up through John, and I went up there the way I look and my colors and everything. And they were they were like so cool to me. I was like, they're like <laughs> no. security, security came up to me. And they're like, what's going on? I was like, I'm, I'm going for money. <laughs> 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 Yo, but you want to hear something? We raised a hundred thousand dollars for that's that kid's a, that's family. Awesome, man. Oh, that's so between, cool, man. between the shows and what you did, and then everything but, else. But, but, but John, you've been doing a lot of good stuff for a lot of people. You know, people talk about like when the people talk about me. Whatever, I know people tell me and you, they're like, "Oh, these guys were crazy," but we do a lot of good stuff. But you, I learned a lot of stuff from you for the benefits, the soup kitchens. And all that yeah. stuff. You, you've been doing this. Yeah, you've been. Well, you, you been was on forever. that show when we when we did the hardcore against hunger thing at Trent. Yo, yep. remember that? That lineup oh, is yo. crazy. What year was that? I don't even remember, dude. That was crazy. <laughs> was we that had Tramps? every band Tramps? on that. Tramps. Yes. We had every band on that fucking show. That was great. I got a shirt for that. I got a shirt for that. I had one too. I just gave it to that. To that uh, Hari Krishna guy, like, well, you know, hey, you know, listen, man. The that was in yeah, ninety eight, man. I mean, the lineup. Just, yeah. just to give you guys a, an example, I mean, that had <laughs> ninety eight. Uh, yeah, bo Chromags, uh, both worlds, Sub Zero, Maximum Penalty, Sick of It All, Burn, Crown of Thorns, Crown of Thorns, VOD, Madball, Shutdown, Biohazard. Uh, we did a Civ Bad Brain. Yep, we did Civ a Bad Brains jam at the end. That was a big, big, that was a, a big, that was a cool place, too. Yo, and, yo, and MTV, guys, MTV covered that shit. Yes. I mean, the ticket price was $14. You got to watch all those bands for that. Imagine that. That's fucking amazing. That's fucking and awesome. And all the money, and then the t-shirt money, and then all the money uh, went to the, to the charity, and they, like, rebuilt out their whole kitchen, and, like, all this great stuff, so. That's That's sick. dope, man. You know, you know see? So people should say thank you more to so you, John. John, John uh, was it last year or maybe maybe two years ago? You did a blood clot record with with a friend of ours, Zeus. Shout out Zeus. Uh, are you working Zeus? on new? Are you working on new blood clot music? Yeah, I am. I'm. Uh, uh, well, you know, Todd passed away. God rest yeah. his soul. Todd, you rest, rest in peace. Todd, you. And we put the record out, and you know, uh, it. We got a record deal with the help, you know. We had the deal already, and then Michael Lago came in and like kind of stepped in as a manager just to structure a really good deal for us. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was with Metal Blade, Brian Slagle, yep. like just a lo just loves music, and uh, so I'll tell you the whole way that shit went down was me and Todd kept meeting and talking about doing some new music, and then. He started writing some riffs, and I was putting together some lyrics. So I went out to do the uh, the Navy SEAL uh, half Iron Man in San Diego. So I spent a couple of days in L.A. But prior to leaving New York, like a week before the race, I tore my calf muscle. 
I remember that. Oh, I remember that. Yep. Yeah. So it was fucked up, and I was still going to try to do the race anyway. So I did like a little three mile run to test the calf in LA, and it was, I couldn't even run a mile. I was like, that's oh, it. So I pulled out of the race, and I always talk about turning negative situations into positive awesome. ones. That's what we all do. You know, we all came from craziness. That's what made hardcore what it is in New York, especially. You know, when we when New York motherfuckers sing about the streets, it's it's real. Right. You know, and uh so the thing was I said, Todd, uh I'm not going down to do the race. I'm staying in LA for the whole week. So we went and got all the I stayed at his place. We worked fourteen hours a day getting the songs together, and then we went and did the demo at the end of those at the end of that week. And got this drummer just to play on the demo. And we got a record deal out of that demo. That's sick. Out of five songs, we got Tal Ronan, who owns Crossroads, was friends with Slagle. And he gave Slagle the tape. Slagle bugged on it. And uh, came back to New York, started playing with different people. And um, it just worked out that... Uh, Joey and Nick Oliveri from uh, Queens of the Stone Age, Stone Age ended up, yeah. yeah, they said they ended up playing bass and and and, uh, and drums for real. And then, yeah, we went, we did the one tour with Negative Approach, which was amazing. Yeah, and all we, these I saw you guys tours, the, on that. Yeah, started coming in all the offers, and then you know Todd relapsed and OD'd and whatever. So uh, that was that, and I waited. About a year and a half, two years, you know, and, and, and uh, I started, I, you know, I reached out to Tom Capone and I was like, yo, because, you know, he had a little slip up, but he's got his shit together completely. Oh, so Tom, 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 is, Tom is playing on the new? Yeah, That's he's sick. one of the best guitar oh, players. Oh, yeah, no, no. I, I, like quicksand, yeah, no, like Tom the whole shit. Sick. And then... <laughs> he's like yo I love that fucking record and it was right before the pandemic all the bullshit lockdowns yeah. and uh, he learned the whole fucking record we went out there and we jammed and did a rehearsal with Todd and, and uh, with uh, I'm sorry with Joey and Nick yeah and, 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 and Tom killed it I still and it was yo he played that shit and then we had some new stuff so me and him have been working on these new songs for like, we got about six or seven new songs for another record. Awesome. And we're just adding the pieces because, uh, you know, having the bass player and drummer on the West Coast, it ain't working, you know? So, yeah. and, and Joey's really busy and Nick's in like five bands too. So I was like, yo guys, I got to work with people on the East Coast and get this shit done. And they were both, like, both those guys, both, both those guys are dope. Joey and Nick. They're both oh dope. yeah. They're good people too. Like, you know, no fucking, they're, my, they're like my good friends. So it was no hard feelings or nothing. They, yeah. I was like, yo, I can't sit around waiting for you guys to come off tour to go do. Shout out to those guys, bro. Yeah, Joey Castillo and Nick Oliveri. We had yo. the best time on that tour. That was the biggest heartbreak. Was like, we we gelled so tight as a band and had the best time yeah, yeah, on the like, road. Like Joey C and Nick and those guys, like the like bass and bass and, and drums are fucking. On the West Coast, those are the two guys. Oh, yeah. Right. That's a lot. They played all the hardcore bands. The punk I'll bands. tell you something. Like I'm going to tell you something else, some history. When Mackie quit right before the fucking uh, Motorhead tour, yeah. I brought Joey up to fucking uh, Profile Records to have him be in the Cro-Mags. Oh, no oh shit. shit. But it didn't work out. And no, he's a, he's a, listen, Joey C., I, I know the guy for years. Every time I see him, one of the fucking nicest fucking guys ever, bro. Yeah, one of the nicest guys you never want to piss off because he was a <laughs> he was a fucking semi pro boxer and like yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's all he's all jacked up. He's jacked yo, up. He's, ready to go. he's a fucking tough motherfucker, man, yeah. and just mad cool and mad humble. And and, yeah. and that was the whole thing. He got two kids, and I know like yeah. going out and pushing a new band up the tracks after what just happened. It's not yeah. going to be paying the bills for his kids. And, and I understand yeah. all that. I yeah. love Joey. I love his wife. I love his kids. I love Nick. He's a fucking madman. 
Yeah, he's, he's, and, and, and I'll tell you something else about Nick. If you look at the We Gotta Know video, yeah. When we when 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 the skateboarding part in the Santa yeah. Monica Civic Center, the yeah. dude that runs in and throws his hands up with the long hair like this yeah. with the Chromex shirt, yeah. that's Nick Oliveri. Oh, no, no oh, shit. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> see, that's see awesome. it. See, it's true. No, it's in the We Gotta Know video. I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna overlay it here so when you're watching it, uh, you'll <laughs> see it. Shout out to Joey C and Nick. So, uh, hey, John, I, I, feel, I know we've kept you for, for about an hour now, so thank you so much. I just Before we let you go, man, where can everybody find you online and, and order your books? Like I said, I, I just picked up The PMA Effect. It's a really good read. Uh, obviously, looking forward to whatever you put out next. So tell everybody where can they find you online, uh, uh, websites, where can we buy all your stuff, all that, all that good stuff. Uh, well, my website is uh, johnjosephnyc.com, and, you know, I'm on Instagram, whatever, John Joseph Cromag, Twitch. Twitter. A certain individual tried to get me to <laughs> take all my. You can't call yourself John Joseph Cromag no more oh, on man. like social media. Oh, my God. And, uh, it, it's just the the amount of pussy shit is ridiculous. Uh, but yeah, you know, uh, I got like I said, I just <laughs> I finished this cookbook that's gonna be released soon. I Good. got this other like manual to do the plant based lifestyle the right way, so that's coming out. I'm working on some TV shit, I'm, uh, movie stuff. I got more books coming, more music, uh, more Ironman triathlons. Like, uh, you know, I just try to keep keep uh, keep going, keep, busy. Keep, going. keep going. There's only one person I know that's busier than me in hardcore. That's Ezek. <laughs> <laughs> so on on that note, guys. Thank you, uh, John, for joining us tonight. I love you, John. I love you, brother. Really, I love you, too, I, I, I appreciate PCOB, you. PCOB, motherfucker. PCOB. <laughs> I appreciate you sharing uh, your stories with us, John. So uh, thank you so much, guys. Uh, that's a wrap for episode number nine. Isaac, And let me you. just say, yep. some of the names have been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> oh, always on this show, man. And we didn't go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> guys, make sure you like and subscribe us on YouTube. Sign up for the newsletter. Uh, we're really excited. We'll catch you guys on episode number 10. Thank you, John Joseph. Later, E. I'll talk right, to you guys yo, later. Peace. peace. peace.